let's go ahead and get started. So hopefully you are here for today's webinar called Decoding the Financial Aid Award Letter. Uh, once again, go ahead and keep your cameras off. That way we can send you all the recording after. But we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, and before we start the presentation, I just want to give some digital community guidelines since we still are on Zoom and we're going to be running the webinar through here. Um, if you have a question at any point during the presentation, please use the raise hand feature to indicate that you have the question. Um, or you can also use the chat box if you would like that we don't have to say it out loud. Whatever you're more comfortable with, that just makes it um, easier for us as well in case you have questions. And just be respectful of the space. Um, we do have a guest presenter here today. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that maybe you don't want to interrupt while she's sharing, you can go ahead and leave it in the chat just so we can keep the flow going. And then um, we'll give time for some questions after the presentation. Um, or we, will, we might answer them as they come. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But those are just our guidelines that we have. And today's presenter uh, is Rosie Rizzo from the University of California, Irvine. Um, she's a program coordinator of the Early Academic Outreach Program. So Rosie, thank you for being here. Um, if you want to give a little quick introduction. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. Um, happy Wednesday. Um, as Andres mentioned, my name is Rosie Rizzo, and I am a part of the Early Academic Outreach Program. Um, so super excited to be here with you all today to um, help you all understand um, your financial aid awards, um, both, of course, students and families, right? So I'm super excited to, to share this information with you all today. Thank you, Rosie. And then we'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Alrighty, so can everyone see my screen okay? Yeah, awesome. Okay, um, so perfect. We're going to go ahead and jump right in. I already gave a quick little introduction about me. Um, so again, like I mentioned, happy Wednesday. Um, hope everyone here is ready with maybe some um, like paper or pens or maybe, you know, ready to take some notes because there will be a lot of useful information and relevant information that we'll be going over today. So after today, uh, after today's presentation, you'll be able to recognize key terminology used in a financial aid package. You will also be able to understand the different components of a financial aid award and also identify the next steps to secure your financial aid award. So we'll be going over the breakdown, um, we'll review some terminology um, that you know I'm sure you all have, have heard of already, but we're going to go ahead and go over it just so it makes a little bit more sense when, it, um, when you're seeing it on your financial aid package. All right, so here's our agenda for today. So uh, like I mentioned, we'll be going over a recap of financial aid terminology, and we will be transitioning into, of course, the basics, the basic components that are included within a financial aid award. Um, after that, we will go ahead and transition into some examples just so that you all are able to see the differences in financial aid letters. And um, we'll also, uh, I'll also share a resource with you, um, the shopping sheet that you could use to use uh, to calculate the overall cost um, of the school that you are planning on going to. And then just ending off with some tips and suggestions for you all um, in regards to, of course, financial aid. So transitioning into a recap, so we are going to be going over the types of aid. So these are the types of aid that are offered, um, especially after, of course, filling out your financial aid application. So um, we'll start off with grants. So grants is, of course, money that is awarded based on financial need. So um, all of these, um, these types of aid will get calculated, of course, based on the financial aid application that you submitted. Um, you do also have the opportunity to qualify for scholarships, which is aid awarded to students for academic achievements, interest, special talents, financial need, or a combination of factors. Uh, so a, um, a good question that I always receive when it comes to scholarships is, do I need to apply for every single scholarship that I want to receive? Um, the question is, I would say yes and no. Um, some scholarships, specifically some specific scholarships may require, may require a supplemental application, um, but many times when completing your financial aid application, you are automatically awarded some scholarships that are offered um, depending on the institution that you are um, applying to or that you have been accepted to. Um, so of course it is yes and no because you are still applying for it in a sense by filling out your financial aid application, um, but there are also other scholarships that do have additional requirements. 
Now transitioning into work study. So work study is a federal aid program that funds part-time student employment, um, which is really awesome, right, to have the opportunity to be able to uh, receive an on-campus job um, while you are, of course, in school. And the awesome thing with work study, and I'll go ahead and emphasize this a little bit later as well, um, is that they're super flexible when it comes to, of course, your, your school schedule and definitely prioritize you being a student, of course, um, before a worker. Another type of aid is also loans. Um, loans are offered and um, within financial aid packages, and it is aid that is borrowed by student and or parents that must be paid back with interest. So um, we're going to be going over the breakdown of the loans that could potentially be offered within your financial aid package as well. All right, so cost of attendance. So um, the definition of cost of attendance is the total amount it will cost you to attend a school during an academic year, which includes tuition and fees, room and board, books and supplies, transportation, miscellaneous, and personal expenses. So the important thing to note here about the cost of attendance is that it is an estimate, right? It's an estimate depending on every student's situation. So um, the things that could definitely vary depending on whether a student wants to live on campus um, or live off campus, right? Could be that big difference within the room and board um, fees, right? Where a student may be having to pay a more, a more significant amount of money um, to, of course, board and room um, room on campus. And um, that could be, of course, a very big significant, right? So um, I'll give you all a, a little breakdown within each category. So the tuition and fees, of course, are the mandatory costs to attend college. Um, the tuition, of course, is the teaching costs and the fees, um, the fees, including the administrative fees to, of course, run the institution. For room and board, it is the living cost when you do go to college. So that includes living in dorms and potentially having a meal plan on campus. And um, I will, of course, mention again, room and board usually is the most expensive um, cost, the most expensive part of the cost of attendance, um, especially depending um, if some institutions do require students to live on campus for the first or, or second year. Books and supplies are also some materials that you do need to take into consideration for um, the, the cost, right, while you are in college. Um, but the, the cost, again, does vary. It just depends if you'd like to be a little bit more um, cost effective and maybe you want to look up to see if there may be some PDF versions of a book online. Or maybe instead of buying a brand new book, you could buy a used book or rent a book as well. Um, so these are things uh, that you could, of course, you know, kind of kind of change the actual like, price, the estimated price range. Transportation will be, would be the cost associated with traveling to and like to your institution or from your institution, um, especially you know for our commuter students. So um, you know transportation costs could include parking passes, car insurance, um, gas, and also make, you know potentially maintenance costs as well. Um, miscellaneous and personal expenses. This could, of course, just be like anything. Of course, for a student living on campus, they will probably have to be buying their own shampoo, their own toiletries, um, or their own, of course, like food, right? They're, they will be having to do to do grocery shopping. Um, so it, it just depends, right? Like I said, all of these um, majority of these um, categories, they, they can fluctuate and they aren't exactly set prices. All right, so here is an example of a cost of attendance, um, just an overall cost of attendance from UC Irvine for the school year of 2022 to 2023. Um, so here within the, um, the slide, you'll see that there are three different categories, living at home, living on campus, and living off of campus as well. So the things that I do want to, of course, take a moment and uh, to really explain are the fixed costs and the adjustable costs. So the fixed cost would be the set prices that, you know, that won't really fluctuate, right? It is a set number, um, which would definitely be the um, system campus and fees, which is, of course, tuition and fees. So typically, this, this price, when it comes to your tuition, is a fixed cost, and that is money that, you know, will be that will be paid. Um, however, the, the rest of the categories can be adjustable costs. So that includes the room and board, books and supplies, transportation, and personal cost as well. Um, and, you know, you, you could definitely lower the cost overall cost of attendance depending on the situation. So as you see here for a student that is living at home, um, these costs, the, of course, room and board up until the personal cost, they are, of course, a little bit less expensive. Um, and, you know, the biggest determining factor would that would 
of that would be the um, room and board, right? So living at home definitely will probably mean paying less rent, um, and that overall changes the the total amount, the total cost of attendance. Um, comparing it to a student that is living on campus, um, they will of course be paying more into in room and board and. Um, perhaps maybe of course like less in transportation and also about the same in personal cost. Um, but you do see that the tuition does stay consistent throughout these two categories. Now for students living off campus, um, you do see that the price does fluctuate a little bit and it is a bit less, um, a little bit more affordable than living on campus. Um, but of course, rent is also a big, one of the most, the highest expenses within this example, um, because of course you are having to pay rent. Maybe you, um, or maybe a student decides to, um, you know, rent out an apartment with a couple of their classmates. Um, the rent is typically a little bit more expensive when um, you are living near the universities. Um, however, you know, nothing like home, right? Um, at home, Parents usually are very nice and they don't charge you as much, right, as um, as much rent as you would in um, renting an apartment near campus. So, um, like I said, the cost of attendance, it is just an estimate. It is what you make of it, really, um, depending on the situation that you um, end up being in, right? Whether you end up being a commuter student, whether you end up living on campus in one of the dorms, or if you end up living uh, near campus, but maybe in one of the, like, university apartments as well. So um, throughout my personal experience, I will go ahead and share that living at home um, was very affordable for me. Um, I decided to live at home and commute from Anaheim to Irvine um, just because, of course, I wouldn't have to pay for rent and wouldn't have to pay for um, any like dorming expenses. So I will say that that definitely helped me. Um, I graduated debt free because I did receive sufficient um, financial aid to cover my tuition and fees. So um, that was just something that, of course, um, was my decision. But again, it, it's a it's a very different situation for every student, especially if a student maybe applied farther from home. Right. So those are just things to, of course, keep in mind. All right, now transitioning to financial aid award basics. So what are what what is the financial aid award right um so it is a, fin a financial aid offer made by an institution um, a student has been admitted to so these you know as students have been receiving their acceptance letters i'm sure they are already starting to receive all of their portal information and being able to log in to see um, their financial aid packages right um if not now i i do know that they usually financial aid packages usually end up coming out um at least by like late april if not end of april um, um, so each college and university presents their financial aid award a little differently, uh, but they should all include the key, the same key elements. Um, so when I do say this, that they, it looks a little different, I will say the format of it is what looks different, uh, but they definitely do include all of the same categories um, because it's essential to know, right? It's essential to know how much it is that you will be paying um, for school or how much financial aid you will be receiving that will, of course, cover majority of the cost maybe. So now uh, we're, we'll be going over some terminology that is within the financial aid award um, that is gift aid. So we're going to go ahead and um, talk about gift aid, which is my favorite type of aid. Um, gift aid does include grants, scholarships, and other aid in coordination with federal, state, and the university. So um, gift aid will always be money that is awarded that you don't have to pay back, that students don't have to pay back. So um, what's really awesome is that um, sometimes there could be institutional scholarships or institutional grants that are offered um, aside from like the Cal Grant or the Pell Grant, right? Um, so that is something to, of course, keep in mind when looking over your financial aid award. The total aid is it includes a total amount of gift aid, work study, and loan eligibility awarded. Um, so typically within your financial aid packages, those are the three things that you'll see. You'll see your gift aid, work study, and the loans that were offered, which is also a type of aid. Now the net cost is the difference between the total cost and the gift awarded amount, right? Um, so we'll go over this and kind of do the breakdown a little bit um, more like later on. Uh, so, you know, just giving you an inside scoop right now. And then um, the EFC, which is, is known to be the expected family contribution, it includes student contribution where students could contribute to this, um, to their payment, of course, of, of the university or of their school or the college um, through work study, loans, and other forms of income. 
and it also includes parent contributions, which would be loans or other income as well. Um, so yeah, the, this would be, you know, what would be within those financial aid award packages. And now um, we'll go ahead and, and check out what exactly it does include. So within majority of the financial aid awards, you will be seeing, um, like I said, the gift aid, work study loans, and other types of, um, of aid. So within the gift aid, I know I mentioned a few already, usually is offered the Cal Grant, Pell Grant. Um, like I mentioned, there are specific university or college grants that are offered specifically through that institution. Um, and they all are a little bit different, right? So um, that college or university grant will be probably named different things based on the institution. And also within this, um, you will see any scholarships that may have been awarded, whether it's scholarships that students may have applied to, or maybe scholarships that were automatically granted to them um, based on, on need, right? Work study is also included with this, where um, students should have been able to opt in to uh, be considered for work study when they were filling out their financial aid application. So um, when you do receive work study, um, students have the opportunity to, of course, accept or decline it. Um, however, I will say that if students don't use it within their first year, um, they won't receive that money, right? It is money that they do need to work for. So super important to um, just take that into consideration. If you don't work for it, then you won't receive the money. Now we'll go over other forms of aid, uh, which includes, you know, some institutions, uh, they do offer health insurance waivers. So um, by, by law, um, within at least the UC system, I know students are required to have health insurance. So they are automatically re like registered into the school and the university health insurance, however, um, which is a fee, right? Um, however, if students do have their own personal health insurance, whether it's through their parents or through their employment, um, then they could go ahead and waive that insurance and um, could basically get that money back, right? That fee that they were automatically enrolled in, they could receive it, um, which is just like an additional form of aid. Uh, some universities do offer housing grants, um, housing grants to encourage students to live on campus, especially if it is a requirement um, for the campus. Uh, usually these housing grants are a bit more um, common. Um, I will say though that they, not, they are offered at every institution or every college. So um, these are just other forms of aid that could be, of course, awarded. Now transitioning into loans, which is everyone's favorite. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so we're going to go over um, subsidized loans. So subsidized loans are um, loans that are actually the best kinds of loans you could get because uh, interest is paid by the uh, Department of Education while students are enrolled at least half time in college. So um, if you are offered loans, and I know, you know, there's a stigma behind loans that you don't want to be like in debt um, or, you know, it, the term loans is, is, of course, a little scary. Um, but if you are uh, able to, of course, if you need loans and if you are offered subsidized loans, I would say this would be the best bet um, because, like I mentioned, the interest you don't have to pay for until six months after you graduate on the remaining balance that you have. But say you take out a subsidized loans and while you're in school, you maybe have an, another job or maybe, um, you know, parents are also helping their student out by helping paying off that loan. If they pay off that subsidized loan that they did receive, um, by the time that they graduate, then there will there will be no interest that was, of course, like paid towards that that loan, which is pretty awesome. So uh, for the unsubsidized loan, this one is um, also a, a good loan, right? Um, but it's also a little different in the sense where the interest does begin to accrue as soon as the loan is dispersed. Um, so this is, you know, the difference between the both is that um, unsubsidized interest automatically starts to accrue. Subsidized doesn't accrue until six months after you graduate. Um, however, I will say for these loans, unsubsidized or subsidized loans, um, they are gener generally um, more affordable in the sense that they do have lower interest rates because they are offered through the Department of Education. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, these loans are more uh, cost effective um, considering, you know, and other loans that you might be able to um, receive through your bank or um, through like an outside agency as well. 
A parent plus loan is a loan that's specifically offered for parents. Um, they do also usually have lower um, interest rates, but a little bit higher than those subsidized or unsub unsubsidized loans. Um, I would recommend, um, this is something that I did for myself. Um, I took out a loan under my name for a summer class that I, I wanted to take. Um, and I did it solely for the purpose of building credit, um, just because I knew it was a smaller amount and I knew I'd be able to pay it off um, by, of course, the end of my, my senior year. year. Um, so if students are able to, of course, have that loan on theirs, it can help them, of course, you know, build credit in that sense as well. But that is just um, a tip of advice um, from my own personal experience. The university loans are also uh, sometimes offered. However, um, these university loans, sometimes they do have a little bit more of a higher interest rate. Um, so I would, you know, refrain, of course, from, from potentially paying more, especially if you're already offered that subsidized or unsubsidized option. We do also have the California Dream Loan, which is offered for undocumented students who did fill out the California Dream Act. So um, within these uh, financial aid awards, um, you'll be able to see um, what you were able to um, receive from whether it was like the federal government or state or the state as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause there to see if there are any questions. Um, I know I went over quite a bit, but um, just keep in mind we will be transitioning into any financial aid. Um, we, will, we will be transitioning to financial aid award letter examples and what it contains. Um, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask now so I could clear it up before transitioning into that. And then feel free to either unmute yourself or leave it in the chat. I'll give you all a moment. Is it possible to not qualify for work study? It is possible um, to not qualify. Um, like I said, all of the financial aid, um, award, like whatever is offered within the financial aid award um, is all based on need. So um, maybe a family, my family might have a higher uh, family contribution, expected family contribution. It is possible that you are awarded um, the work study option. Um, but as long as you did opt in when you were filling out your financial aid application, you are considered for it. Um, so maybe if you um, want to, I mean, some, it usually is awarded. However, um, there are those instances when they're they're not awarded. Um, but like I said, you, you would have needed to opt in to actually be considered for it. Great question. Anyone else? All right, I'll go ahead and continue. So we are jumping into some award letter examples. So we are going to jump into an example that is from UC Irvine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you all. So please feel free to stop me at any time if you have any um, questions or if there's something that isn't clear. Um, so within this financial aid award, you will see the categories that we went over, right? So we went over gift aid, student work study, loans, and other you will see the descriptions of the aid that was offered, also the amounts, and also this additional section um, where students are able to either confirm um, or ac accept or deny or decline the aid that was offered. Um, so within this example, it's important to note that there is an expected family contribution of $3,700, and it is broken down by the parent contribution and the student contribution. And also keep in mind that this is the... Um, you know, the kind of like the calculation that was determined based on the financial aid application. Um, so super just important to keep that in mind. Um, I will start off by saying that EFC, just because there is an EFC there does not mean that that is the exact amount that you are going to have to pay out of pocket. Um, because remember that this is, of course, um, it's an estimate, right? Um, and like I said, you know, you don't have to pay all at once. So there's no need to take out a specific loan for it. And um, that is a question that I do receive frequently. So just wanted to emphasize that now before I'm just going into the, the breakdown a little bit more. So within the gift aid uh, category, you do see the student was offered Cal Grant A, the federal Pell Grant, the UCI grant, and you see the amounts that was awarded. And of course, it's free money, right? So all of the amounts should have been accepted and confirmed. So you're able to see here the total amount of gift aid. So all that free money, right? 
Um, here, you're also able to see all of the student work study that was offered. So the stu student qualified for $1,500 of work study that they could use um, while working on campus or having a campus job. And then you do also see the loans that were offered. So um, like I said, you do, you do see the two main categories, which is the um, unsubsidized loans, subsidized loans, and you do see the university loan as well. Um, so this person did great. This person probably listened to my presentation um, because they did accept the subsidized loan. And that again is the loan that you don't have to start paying interest until six months after you graduate. Um, the unsubsidized loan amount and the university loan amount uh, was declined, so they didn't even though it was offered to them, it didn't mean that they necessarily had to accept it. Um, they had that option. And the loan fee usually is just automatically applied. Um, so you're able to see the total amount of loans that was offered. Um, but keep in mind that they only um, accepted a portion of it. Here, you also see the other category where the health insurance uh, waiver was accepted. So they did receive those $2,000 back. Um, so here you could, of course, see what was um, offered, what was accepted, and what was declined. And um, within this award letter, within the award letter, it should give you the estimated cost of attendance, which is here as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, just transition into a different award letter um, because afterwards I'll be showing you what a shopping sheet is so that you're able to calculate the overall cost versus the, the aid that you have received. All right, so this is a second example um, based on UC uh, Berkeley. So this is uh, just another example. So you could see how it's broken down differently, right? Um, so for this award letter, you can see, of course, the descriptions again. Um, this financial aid award has an additional um, column for the department the annual total, and then the status, whether it was confirmed or accepted. Um, so something that's important to take note is here, it does say annual total. Um, so that will be the financial aid that was offered throughout the entire school year. Um, so just keep in mind that, you know, within UC Berkeley, UC Berkeley is still in a semester system. Um, so it'll technically be split up in, into two, right? Um, so that $7,000 would be $3,500 the first semester, $3,500 the second semester. So super important to keep note and um, to double check exactly what it's being, how it's being separated. And um, because some financial aid award letters, they do separate it by semester or by quarter. So here we get to see that the student received the Berkeley scholarship, um, which is one of those institutional scholarships that I mentioned that you automatically get qualified for by submitting that financial aid application. You do also see they were awarded Cal Grants, Federal Pell Grant, and the uh, UC Undergraduate Grant as well, um, which is also another institution-based um, institution award um, that was, of course, given to them. So the total gift aid that they received was $24,500, which is awesome. Um, we love free money. And we do see here they were also offered work study. Um, they were eligible for $4,000, and it was accepted. So this means that the student will be, um, of course, obtaining a on campus job um, to use this additional aid. Uh, for loans, uh, the, the student was offered both the subsidized and unsu unsubsidized loans, um, direct loans. So um, again, the student, again, probably listened to one of our presentations because they did accept the subsidized loan, um, which means no interest until they graduate, and they did decline the unsubsidized loan. Um, so you do see the total gift aid that was offered, and you do see the overall grand total of all of everything that was offered, right? Of all the gift aid, work study, and the loans. So it, um, keep in mind, it is including the additional um, loan that was declined. So um, like I said, we'll go ahead and, and go over the, the breakdown of how to calculate the over co overall costs. Um, this student did have a family contribution of 3,800. So this is what um, financial aid is expecting the family to contribute to on a yearly basis. And of course, within this um, award letter, you could also see the cost of attendance here. All right, and now uh, transitioning into a UC Santa Barbara award letter. Um, as you can see, this one does look a little different, right? Um, one thing that's very important to note here is that this is an award letter um, that was provided for an undocumented student. So um, here, because they are undocumented, they do only qualify for state aid, um, not at a federal level, unfortunately. However, you do see that they, do, that they did still receive a good amount of gift aid. So they did qualify for the Cal Grant A, um, uh, they also qualified for the UCSB grant, um, which was one of those institution-based um, grants. 
agency scholarship and the AB 540 non-resident um, uh, fee. Um, so, you know, what the student did is that they were able to fill out um, kind of like an application, um, an affidavit, which is available within the institution so that um, they could qualify for in-state tuition instead of out-state, out-of-state tuition. Um, and they were also offered that California Dream Loan um, within their financial aid award. So here it's important to note that each um, that their EFC was zero. So um, based on their financial um, they, their financial income, a family wasn't you know um, didn't need to of course contribute to anything. Um, and you're able to see here that within this award letter, it is broken up by quarter. Um, so you're able to see of course how um, how it how it is how it varies right per financial aid award. Um, you see Berkeley's was yearly, but here Santa Barbara's is broken down into semesters. So um, you're able to see that overall they did receive a total amount of about fifty seven thousand dollars in gift aid, and um, they did qualify for this loan. And you, you're just able to see the overall aid that was offered to them, and you could compare it to the overall cost of attendance. So great. Any questions on any of those award letters before I transition to the shopping sheet? I know it's a little easier if I like point it out, or if you all have any questions on a specific um, portion of the award letter, I could definitely point it out before transitioning. Uh, wait, I had a question. Um, like, what happens if the expected family cost is like more than like the actual amount of um, like the net cost to go? That's a good question. Um, that is something that um, we could definitely take a look at. Um, of course, like I mentioned, it is based on um, your family income. So it is kind of like the calculation, right, that they that they have. Um, but I would say if it's still something that, um, you know, maybe a challenge to, of course, um, provide for the net cost, um, then you might, you know, I'm not sure, depending on your financial aid award, if you were also offered maybe additional loans, um, but that's something that you could definitely talk to your financial aid office about, um, especially if you, if you know that maybe like, um, of course, maybe you had a special circumstance through like COVID, right, that may have changed a little bit of this, um, like financial calculation, um, but it definitely is something that we could look into. Um, like I said, there are other costs and other ways to, of course, um, be paying for the overall like net cost, what it, it is the remaining balance of your um, financial aid award. Um, sometimes there's additional scholarships that you could apply for, um, or maybe there's other additional loans that they could offer as well. Good question. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'll go ahead and transition into the shopping sheet um, so that you all are able to kind of get an understanding, right, of how to overall, um, how to calculate the overall net cost. So um, the net cost being like the remaining balance of what needs to get paid, right? So um, here you see the shopping sheet. Um, there's shopping sheets that are accessible online. Um, you could Google it, you could look up um, shopping sheet for the UC system or the Cal State system. And there usually is one that is offered so that you're able to actually fill in the blanks and see um, what your like estimated cost will be. So um, for this student, um, Peter the Ant Eater, um, you are able to see their, of course, tuition and fees, their room and board, book supplies, and um, all of that. You're able to see the work study that was offered and um, the gift aid that was offered. So first you go, of course, you go through the cost of attendance, the overall cost of attendance, and you subtract all the gift aid that was received. So you do see the, the overall like net cost. So this is basically like the remaining balance, right? The remaining balance that is needed to be paid through, um, of course, like loans, um, through work study, or through like family help, right? Or yourself um, by maybe having or receiving, or of course, getting like another job. Um, so then you're able to calculate the overall work study that is also offered, um, the loans that you may qualify for, and you might, of course, accept and receive. And then you're able to, of course, um, over see like the remaining balance of what is expected for you or your family to contribute to um, to supplement this net cost. Um, so that is, of course, what is, um, those are just different ways um, 
that you could, of course, kind of complete that cost. I know, of course, you know, times are a little tough right now with COVID and everything, but um, there are definitely ways, especially if you do um, feel like there may have been like an error or anything like that, definitely contacting your financial aid office for the institution that you are planning on going to. Um, there's always, you know, more information that they have. Uh, maybe they have additional scholarship opportunities or other grants that they may be able to distribute. Um, so super important to definitely um, address that. Um, sometimes if you, um, even if your net cost is still like a significant balance than the aid that was received, even through loans, um, there are also other uh, ways, right? There are, are also other loans that you could qualify for, um, maybe throughout like an outside department, an outside like bank, maybe a family bank or credit unions usually have uh, much lower interest rates as well. Um, so those are things to definitely look into um, to help supplement that cost. And I will say um, the net cost, it is like a, within like a yearly basis, right? Um, so think about it. If you maybe have like another uh, job, maybe on the weekends, right? And um, maybe, of course, parents are also helping their student. You could be making payments towards that net cost. It doesn't all have to be a like one and done, right? You may not have to pay um, those $16,000 all in one sitting. It is um, throughout the entire year. Um, so just something to keep in mind. All right, so now going into some tips and suggestions, um, we are going to be going over verification. Um, so when receiving your financial aid applications, I mean, sorry, your financial aid award letters, um, there may be instances where some students are um, they are chosen for verification. So the financial aid offices can select you to verify information submitted on your college or financial aid application. Um, so that's why, like I, like I stress, you know, you should be definitely um, looking into your emails, make sure that you're checking those school portals that you have, um, you should now have access to. And uh, because that's where you will be notified if you are selected for verification. And I will stress it is super, super important to make sure that you are submitting any required documents and submitting them by the deadlines as well, um, because if you don't submit by the deadlines, then you may be at risk of not receiving um, a specific type of aid or just financial aid in general. Um, so definitely want to just, you know, make sure that you are, um, if you do happen to get selected for verification, that you are on top of it um, to ensure that you do receive as much aid as you possibly can. Um, and as mentioned, it does say um, each institution does have strict deadlines, um, but they are not all the same, right? So every school is like at this point, um, an individual school, each school has their own individual financial aid office. So it's no longer contacting the FAFSA application or the California Dream Act application. Now it's contacting the individual schools for additional resources and help. All right, and then just some reminders, um, like I mentioned previously, if there are any errors or if you have any questions on your financial aid package, we do highly, highly, highly encourage you to contact the financial aid office um, at the specific in institutions that you applied to. Um, and right now, I know there you may not have made SIR or you not have um, you haven't made a choice yet, the school that you are going to. So it might require you to call multiple different like financial aid offices, right, um, to maybe see what what it is that that school could do for you. Um, like I said, at this point, it's in, it's individually um, within each institution to um, to see what it is that they could offer you more um, or what they can't offer you, right? And you're able to, of course, make comparisons in that if they're able to adjust your financial aid package. Um, and super easy to find, of course, the contact information for um, financial aid, depending on the institution. Um, if you want to find the financial aid office contact for uh, like Long Beach, um, you just type in SEULB financial aid office information or contact, and you'll be able to um, find their um, contact information there, vice versa for any of the UC schools um, or even community colleges as well. So great. Okay, so I am going to leave it open for questions. Any questions that you all may have? Um, I know there were some questions that were previously submitted as well, um, but I'll go ahead and leave it open right now for you all to just ask if there's anything that you would like for me to go over again um, or anything that you all would like for me to clarify or any general questions as well. Hi, uh, so how much um, aid, how, wait, like, how do you determine how much aid a student gets? 
Um, so that is all determined through the financial aid application, depending on the one that you received. Um, it is all based on need. So um, if a family's income is lower, then that means that financial aid um, will be offering more money to help supplement the cost of, um, of course, college or their education. Um, if parents or families do have higher income, um, then they may receive a little bit less aid um, because it they have more income to, um, of course, like pay for school. I know it's it, I know it's a little unfortunate. Does it really sound um it just sounds a little different to explain it in that sense, but it is an overall calculation um, based on the financial aid application. So it is all need-based. Um, when you are receiving your financial aid award letter, um, keep in mind it is based on need. Also, the institution grants that you may receive, again, you know, a lot of it, it is based on um, the overall need that a family might need to, of course, attend an institution. Didn't realize how many needs there were in there. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, I mean, one of the first ones that comes up would be through FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, but also maybe the CSS um, profile as well, just depending on the school that, that you apply to. And, and there's other as, others as well, but those are the two that come to mind. Um, we also have an, a question in the chat from Esmeralda. She said, uh, how would you go about requesting more scholarships from our school's financial aid office? And more specifically, what should we include in an email requesting this? Good question. So um, I would actually definitely encourage maybe calling the financial aid office, um, maybe making an appointment if you're able to at the financial aid office, because um, you're able to actually talk to a representative that's able to um, look at your profile, right? Um, so if you are wanting to request more scholarships, of course, I'm just approaching it very nicely. Um, financial aid right now is probably being bombarded with all of these calls, and um, it is just a matter of like customer service, right? You always want to, of course, make sure that you are approaching this and asking to see if there's anything that they could do for you. Um, but one thing that I would um, encourage you all to do is if you are requesting additional scholarships or looking to, of course, maybe negotiate a little bit of that financial aid package, um, have reasoning behind like why you do need that additional um, aid or why it is that, you know, maybe circumstances have changed within this last year that may not allow you to um, contribute to paying for college, right? Right? Um, those are things that you should have like prepared because they will ask you that. And if they don't ask you that, they'll probably um, give you a form for you to maybe do like a financial aid appeal. And if they don't ask you, the form will definitely ask you to um, definitely include like why it is that you are requesting additional aid. Um, so have, you know, have that ready and prepared. Um, like I, I won't give you specific examples because every, you know, every everyone's life is very different and has different situations that they're currently going through. Um, um, but if you would like to, of course, um, call financial aid, it doesn't hurt to try. Um, the worst thing that they could say is no, like, no, I'm sorry, we don't have additional resources or additional funds to um, provide to you. Um, but they won't, you know, that that just because they say no to additional financial aid doesn't mean that they'll take away your um, your acceptance into the, the university or the college, right? Um, so give it a try, give it a shot. And like I said, just have those the reasoning behind um, why it is that you may need that supplemental um, aid, right? So always having, having the reasoning why. Let's see, I do see another question. And also let me know, um, as when I left that answered your question, um, I'll, I will leave you all with my contact information as well. If you all have any other questions that you may need to go a little bit deeper in, um, I'm more than happy to help. Um, let's see, Noah said, if we get outside scholarships, do we have to report them to the school? And if so, how does that affect what we receive? Um, so very good question. Um, you do usually have to report the outside scholarships that you do receive. Um, however, it shouldn't. Um, I haven't seen them really take away a whole lot of aid um, from students when they do receive outside scholarships, unless it was a very like, significant amount. Um, they'll like adjust your financial aid package, um, but usually they, do, they don't. Um, like take away any aid that you have received. Um, it's very rare unless, like I said, it was a significant amount of money um, because sometimes the scholarships, they are merit-based, right? They're based on maybe any like accomplishments that you may have done. And um, it would be a little unfair for them to take a whole chunk of your aid away just for, for a scholarship. So you do have to report them. Um, depending on the year, I do believe, I don't think you'll have to report them this year um, because 
because the financial aid application you filled out was from the previous year, um, but definitely for the next time you fill out your financial aid, they will um, ask you for that scholarship information. Awesome. Uh, Diana said, my status shows process successfully, but I have not received an award letter. Do I have to call the, call the school or wait for that? Um, if you haven't received the award letter, it is absolutely okay. Um, it still is pretty early on. If you think about it, the financial aid um, deadline was March 3rd, but did just get extended um, to April 1st. So they might still be working on, um, you know, kind of crafting and putting together the financial aid award letter. So um, I would wait by a a little bit more like mid-April if you don't receive anything by then, um, which you should, um, then I will definitely call. Um, but like I said, keep an eye out on um, your, keep an eye out on your email and also be logging into your school portal and checking that financial aid tab. Let's see. Caleb said, my financial letter expected parents to pay 25K, but they can't. What do I do? Um, so that is a very great question. And I know I've been receiving a lot of questions in that sense from um, students that have been, um, that haven't really received a whole lot of um, aid. Um, I do feel that we could maybe talk about this and maybe talk about options, um, maybe with throughout a different meeting, just because I want to be able to dig a little bit deeper to see what kind of aid you may have been, you may have been offered and see um, kind of help you navigate. So Caleb, if you would like to reach out or maybe stick around um, later on after the call, then we could go ahead and, and maybe just go over some other options. Great, okay, let's see. Esmeralda said, how do we know which scholarships from outside sources affect the money we receive in, in financial aid? Um, I wouldn't stress too much about the outside uh, scholarships. Um, like I said, unless it's a significant amount of money, um, it shouldn't be like any specific scholarship that affects it. Um, it is just the amount, right? The amount of money that you do receive through it. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Like I said, if you have that specific question or if you're really worried about it, um, each school does calculate scholarships in their own different way. Uh, because like I mentioned, at this point, it is very um, individual and just very particular to each institution and what it is that they offer. Um, but I will say it's very rare for um, schools to just, you know, kind of minimize the aid that was provided um, based on an outside scholarship. These are all really good questions. I'm glad that they're being asked because if someone has this question, well, more than likely someone else in the, mm -hmm. in the webinar has that same question. So yeah, these are good. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's see, put my um, contact information so you all could start writing it down as well, but I'll still keep taking questions. Uh, how does UCI distribute aid? Um, so they do distribute it through the form of like the financial aid award letter as well. Um, I'm not exactly sure if you're talking about like what kinds of aid they distribute, um, but through my own personal experience, um, for me, the aid that was distributed to me and the most like helpful um, throughout my four years was the Blue and Gold Scholarship. Um, that was also a need-based scholarship that was offered based on my family income and my family size. Um, my parents made under a significant, uh, under a specific amount of money um, and because my my family size was a little bit bigger um, it technically kind of categorized me into that like low income um, sector so I did receive um, you know that blue and gold scholarship that did that did uh, cover majority of my um, tuition and fees but there are also different levels right so there is like a middle class scholarship um, there's other scholarships that are offered and like I said it is all based on need um, and like I said it usually is calculated um, depending on your family income and your family size, how many people are um, living within that income and living, you know, um, depending on that income. They do also offer um, work study as well. Um, that is very common um, throughout, of course, many institutions. Um, I never took advantage of work study because I had a job outside um, as like a commuter student. So that was something I didn't take advantage of, but I wish I did. I wish I I had gotten more experience like having on campus job. Any other questions?
Um, well, if some another question comes in, then then we can answer it. But uh, I just want to thank you, Rosie, for your insight um, for this presentation. There's a lot of really good information that I wish when I was going to uh, doing through the whole application process, I would have known um, because financial aid award letters can be scary if you don't know what you're looking at. But um, you really did break it down very well. So thank you so much for giving your time to us here. Uh, I know everyone else in the meeting appreciates it as well. Great. Awesome. Happy to be here and happy to, of course, provide you all with this information. Um, always super helpful to know, especially during this time um, when you are receiving your acceptances and, um, of course, comparing financial aid letters because it is important, right? Um, I know for me, that was the determining factor for me to go to UCI versus maybe like UC Santa Barbara, UC San Diego, um, because that ended up being more affordable for me um, to, to just commute.